Steel hauling is total nightmare fuel. It's a method of torture and execution that involved looping a line to the bottom of a ship and attaching it to a sailor's waist or ankle. They were then thrown overboard where they were mercilessly dragged along the barnacle-infested vessel. Initially, aside from the imminent threat of drowning, you'd find yourself feeling like a splattered fly scraping against the vessel bottom. The many barnacles littering the eroding ship would pierce into your flesh. If the ship's moving quickly, this will result in long, jagged lacerations that will pulsate and quiver. Of course, releasing currents of blood can attract all sorts of ravenous marine life. If you're lucky, you'll be thrown headfirst into the hull, which will hopefully knock you out. If a shark doesn't arrive to sink its teeth into your meats, you'll be left to the wrath of drowning. Of course, massive panic will slow time down. Your throat will burn from the salt and suffocation as if molten metal's creeping up. Eventually, your brain will trigger an involuntary breath. You'll aspirate salt water into your lungs. They will burn and grow heavy. You'll be out in three minutes and dead in four to six. A gibbet refers to any device used in public executions, but the act of gibbeting is a whole other story. You need the gallows for this one. Instead of having a rope tied to the neck of the prisoner, they were shoved inside of a bone-tight, human-shaped cage made of iron. They were then hung up on the gallows on display. If you were busy on the day of the execution, it's no worries because you'd have around three full days to swing by and witness the spectacle. The prisoner was left to die of either exposure or dehydration, but it gets worse. Once the prisoner was nearing death and smelling extra ripe, crows would come perch on the cage and peck and peck and peck him alive. His juicy eyeballs, tender lips, and soft earlobes were especially delectable. Spectators really loved to witness the prisoner crying, screaming, and begging for mercy. I mean, just imagine this. You're dying in absolute terror and agony, and the soundtrack of your demise is a laughing, cheering crowd. This has been used as far back as the 16th century, and it is both dehumanizing and cringe-inducing. First of all, you would have your nostrils clenched shut with a device that looks like an intimidating wrench. You will have to open your mouth in order to breathe, at which point a hollow bite block will be shoved in, followed by a long tubed funnel, or maybe even a long round piece of cloth. Next, a high volume of liquid will be forcefully poured down your gullet. This will mostly be water, but it wasn't uncommon to add urine or animal blood just to kick things up a notch. Of course, you'll be gagging, your chest will run cold, you'll regurgitate some of it and aspirate it into your trachea, which will burn like a son of a bitch. The point is to inflate the stomach so much that it may rupture, but it will also certainly kill by diluting the sodium in your blood, which will take a while. In the meantime, your gut will be repeatedly whacked with sticks over and over, causing you to violently vomit as onlookers watch and laugh. This torture method was not meant to kill a person, but to inflict plenty of anguish to get them to divulge all of their secrets, and allegedly it was very effective. This would all begin with dipping your feet in salt water. Next, your restrained and hungry goat brought in. Yep, you heard me right. Of course, the goat would begin feverishly licking the soles of your feet. If you have a cat dog, you understand this pain. A goat's tongue is rough. It's very similar to sandpaper. Initially, it would tickle and feel super awkward, but as it continues to lick the same spots over and over, your flesh would grow raw. It's believed that if this continued for an hour or more, the goat would eventually lick your skin right off. This would induce a deep, vulnerable, hot throbbing that would overtake your foot, with each lick rubbing the salt into your practically road-burnt soul. You'd squirm and scream for mercy. The torture continues long after, when you must walk on your bloodied skin, and it would take weeks for that madness to dull. First of all, you're in for a bit of a process. Human skin doesn't just slide off your body. You'll need to be tenderized a bit. Either you'll be placed in the sun all day until you're burnt to a crisp or dipped into boiling water. Which would you prefer? Sadly, that isn't even the worst part. Instead of having time to recover from your smoldering pain, the flaying process will begin. The skin on your face will be sliced off first because it's the easiest and most accessible. The cut will extend beneath all layers of skin to just above the muscle. After, small punctures will be made all over your body to score the flesh. Then, very long, thin pieces will be cut and peeled off of you like you're some kind of cutie orange. You will feel every single nerve ending as it is dissected, and these nerves extend into even your deepest layer of skin. This horrific torture will go on for hours. Death will come from blood loss, shock, hypothermia, or infection. Your skin is an organ that keeps in heat and keeps out dangerous bacteria. Without it, you cannot survive. You'll be forced to endure your agony for up to an entire day before your system gives out. This is still used today in some of the most brutal prisons in the world. It's a punishment for hunger strikes. Instruments are not always sterilized and are administered with such frustration that it causes some of the worst pains imaginable. A long, thick tube is shoved down the throat, often without lubricating. 
This offers a sensation of sharp metal digging and ripping through tissue. Every time it moves, it's like a chemical fire is roaring up your throat. Occasionally, the force ruptures the esophagus. This induces a wild pounding pressure that penetrates through your chest. The surrounding tissue responds with inflammation that can plug up the airway. This kicks up a profound panic and doom. Sometimes so much nutrition is forced down the tube at quick rates that it straight up busts the stomach. Imagine a small nuke detonating in your gut, causing ripple after ripple of mouth-watering, nauseating, doubling over, cramping, and it only gets worse. As the day fades to night, a deadly infection of the lining of the gut springs up. Death can arrive in anywhere from minutes to four days later. This execution didn't require any extra bells and whistles or added theatrics. It simply required one prisoner, a mob of sadistic and angry folk, and one steep rock. This rock was known as the Tarpeian Rock, and it offered an intimidating straight-down drop of 80 feet. It was just high enough to likely cause death, but low enough for the possibility of surviving a minute or two in bone-busted, organ-ruptured anguish. A second go-around was always a possibility. First, the prisoner was dragged to the top of the toe-tingling cliff, and their utter terror put on full display. Next, they were turned over to the angry mob, where they were brutally beaten, taunted, and tortured. There was only one strict rule. The prisoner must remain alive and aware. After the villagers had their fun, it was showtime. The kicking and pleading prisoner was hoisted into the air by a group of two or four, rocked back and forth, and then heaved off of the cliff. They would go airborne only to plummet just a couple short seconds to their mingled death below. If they continued screaming, the process was repeated, but it was rare for anyone to survive for long.